Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Even have greater leverage in Europe. And uh, what I discovered and what's pretty easy to discover, frankly, is a 3.58% move down in assets would mean that Morgan Stanley was completely insolvent. And then, of course, you would get the uh, domino effect spilling over into all of the banks. So I think we've reached a critical mass point here where we have to melt up because of not that piece of leverage, but also all the derivatives that are based on all of those assets. Or, so, it's hard for me to really call them assets these days, but those instruments. Right. Uh, let me ask you this. I mean, are the insiders right now, are they still playing in the market or are they selling off right now? Oh, no. Um, the insiders are getting out in droves, in droves. I do that every Wednesday on insider trading. It's, it's pretty obvious. And I'll tell you, with this recent Equifax scandal, one thing that was kind of interesting, about three weeks before the scandal broke, on uh, the insider trading piece, I actually showed where TransUnion, I could be off by a couple bucks, but for every $1 worth of buying of their stock, they were selling more than $2,200 of their stock. So, and that would have been stock they had previously accumulated, but you know, I'm, I can't prove this, so I don't know but I am wondering if they knew what was about to happen because all of those credit rating agencies stocks have been, or not the, um, the agencies, but the consumer credit agencies, their stocks have dropped dramatically since the scandal broke. So you think they knew that something was coming down the pike? I think it's possible. I mean, you know, there's a lot of heavy insider trading in general, but, you know, a 2200 to one move is a pretty substantial, I mean, that's even more than what I normally see. So I, I think anything is possible. I can't, I can't verify it, but. L let me ask you, the, the, uh, as we see the market today and, and also we see precious metals, uh, that's hovering around $1,300 or so, and I'll get to precious metals in a second. Is the market right now in a in a bubble? Uh, when you when you look around and and you see all you know when you do all your research and everything, is the market in a bubble right now? Without one little doubt in my mind, yes. So you're not believing the corporate um, uh, sales revenue, their earnings. I mean, they're coming out with you know earnings and they're saying that everything's fine. You're not believing any of that. No, I'm I'm not believing any of that because all of the stock buybacks means that there are fewer shares to do the earnings per share against, but a lot of the stock that they've been buying back have been from the corporate insiders that have been selling. And, you know, in order for a corporation to really expand economically then uh, and really make more money, well, there are a couple things in there, but you know, you have to have 70% of, of our GDP is consumer driven. And the general consumer, I mean, the middle class has been demolished. Who's shopping? Who's really buying? You know, even online to the, uh, to the big box stores or to any of the box stores. I mean, why are all these companies going out of business? It's not like all of the shopping that's been done in these malls have all transferred online. Yes online sales have been escalating, but it's still only 10% of the general sales. So yes, I don't believe, I don't believe a word of it, actually. I think so, it's all accounting and smoke and mirrors. 
So you think it's just one big mirage, you know, they're just they're just putting it out there to, to convince. And you, and you mentioned something very interesting about uh, retail and online shopping, because the corporate media makes a really big deal. It's, you know, it's the Amazon effect. Uh, everything's going to Amazon. And but, you know, <laughs> the, the, the retail market is a trillion dollar market here. And Amazon, you know, it's only billions compared to the trillion dollar market. And like you said, it's only 10 percent. Why do you I mean, from your perspective, why do you think they keep telling us that it's all because of Amazon? Oh, wow. Okay. There are a couple of things about that. And actually, um, next week, I'm, I'm going to dig into this a little bit more in that rabbit hole. But, you know, the, the number one, and really, I think this is number one, they want everybody to be comfortable doing absolutely everything online. If they can convert this physical world that we live into uh, absolute virtual reality, then that would be a preference. And so there's a lot of attention that's being paid to anything that is in cyberspace. But number two, over the years, uh, there's been, you know, they talk about monopolies, right? But, but all of our choice is really more illusion. So the there are just a few corporations that actually run and are, and own everything. So when they're talking about the Amazon effect, uh, you know, I have some really strong feelings about Amazon going into a mom and pop area and they don't have to make money. Amazon doesn't have to make money. I mean, that was their business model. We are going, we don't have to, we're not going to make any money. I mean, they're still not really making money and they've been around for a while. And they don't have to, up until recently, and I don't even think this is true in all cases, um, since they ship to different states, they also didn't have to collect state sales tax. So they had a huge advantage over mom and pops. And they'd go into these different areas and absolutely annihilate the mom and pop shops and the local businesses, which is really what feeds a community is the local business. And then, you know, here's the reality. Once they have full control, then they can charge you anything that they want. So personally, I can't shop at Whole Foods anymore because I don't like the fact that Amazon went in there and bought them. I don't trust Amazon. I'm sorry. I mean, this is a personal thing. Everybody's going to do what they're comfortable with. But I can't support their methodology and uh, because I see them as really going in and, and destroying communities. And so I think it's also a consolidation of the monopolies. And I think we're at the point where, you know, there's still some some mergers and acquisitions that can happen. But essentially, you've got it all down to just a group of players. So there's really two parts to that. One is the impact that it has on on the community and the local businesses within a community. And then the other is their ability, once they control an area, to really go in and charge anything they want. And then what are you going to do if you need to buy it? You're going to have to pay it. True. I wanted to move on to precious metals right now. And we see gold there. It's hovering around $1,300 or so. It's it's um it's holding steady at this point. Uh, do you see gold breaking out anytime soon? Uh, do you see anything happening with gold? Because we see the crypto market. I mean, that is fluctuating and that is picking up. And a lot of people compare the crypto market as a free market. And this is what gold should be doing. I wanted to get your take on gold and, and where do you think it, it is headed? OK, well, since gold is a primary currency metal and the tool against which central banks reset their currencies, then it benefits them to continue to keep it suppressed. And that's where I think they will continue. I'll, I think they're going to continue to do that until it suits them otherwise, because the otherwise piece is that cryptocurrency space which people think go around the system, but I'm actually gonna be talking about this on Thursday. Um, the reality is, is it was outlined in 96 by the NSA and then smart contracts were outlined by a peer-to-peer -peer review uh, journal in 97. So I don't think it's outside of the system. I think it is the belly of the beast 
And uh, typically when there is a money standard shift, they need to inspire voluntary cooperation. They don't want the pushback. And so that goes along with the Amazon effect in getting people into and feeling comfortable with that cyberspace so that once you're in it, then, you know, then they really do have full control. It's not really around the system. It isn't. So, so what you're saying is, uh, and we're talking about the, the blockchain technology, uh, the crypto Correct. market, you're saying that this was created by the bankers? I'd say that the government and the bankers uh, certainly and the attorneys certainly had a hand in it. At least it looks like that from my research. And you're but saying I'll put that out there. Everybody can follow the links and and check them out and you can draw your own conclusions. But, yeah, I don't I think this was planned. And and the other part that I saw when I was putting this together is the timing of when Bitcoin came out which was January of 2009. And what happened on March 9th of 2009 was the start of the QE. I, I, I'm sorry, there are so many, and presumably this was all brand new technology. The uh, guy started working on the code in 2007. I don't think so. I don't, that's not true. It's not true. So do you think this was done on purpose to usher us or direct us into a new currency? Is that what they're trying to do? 100%. That's my opinion. 100% because the old system, which is based upon a never ending compounding debt and compounding interest does not function anymore. And they knew that in 97, because that, well, maybe shortly after 97, but when you look at that period of time in the mid 90s to the 2000s, there were a lot of things that happened and a lot of shifts that occurred. But in 97, that was peak debt. In other words, the ability to grow, to create economic stimulation via debt. That's when it peaked was in 97. And that's also when they came out, started uh, coming out with the speculative derivatives to add leverage to the system. So yes, I absolutely, they knew that, that the end was there now, uh, back in the nineties. And then of course we had the NASDAQ bubble that, that, uh, distracted you from what happened with long-term capital management, which is when the global financial system almost imploded. We taxpayers bailed them out. Did you guys know that? But we taxpayers bailed them out and wall street bailed them out. And then we were off to the races again, and we had the NASDAQ bubble that popped, and then we had 9-11 that popped. And so our rights were then started to be obviously, you know, more contained. But yeah, they knew that then. So why not suck as much as you can out of the system via these derivative, these speculative derivatives until that bubble burst in 2008? And, you know, and this whole time we've been on life support just to keep the system alive to get this next piece in place. And and when you look at the price action on an end involvement participation in the crypto space, I mean, I, I can see the story it's painting me. I'm an artist. I see patterns. Those patterns are super obvious. They're just obvious. But if you're not looking, if you're just looking at the day-to-day -day gyrations, you're not going to see the patterns. That's why you got to stand back and take a look at, a, at the real picture, not the little pieces inside of that picture, which is what most people look at. Now, I, I mean, I just want to stay on the subject for a little bit longer. Uh, the, the, the blockchain technology is distributed on to many different servers. It's decentralized. So how would they control all of this if it's decentralized and there's many different pieces to it. I mean, the system they have now is, you know, they create the currency, the banks that they can control, they, you know, they can control the, the computer systems. This is more decentralized and it's, you know, all around the world. I mean, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Right. That's a that's a really good question. And actually, the Bank for International Settlements 
Um, I'll be showing the money flower that they came out with to show how it overlaps and how the central banks can control the cryptocurrencies for us. However, having said that piece, if they get you comfortable in that crypto space and then they, I mean, look at what's happening in China right now, right? They've, they eliminated the IP, the ICOs. They shut down all of the exchanges, yet they want their, everybody there, all the technology there to keep moving forward with blockchain because they've stated quite clearly that blockchain technology is in their future. So it's really, they don't care what happens right now, but as far as the decentralization goes, everything has to go through nodes. So even though the system itself is uh, computers that are linked, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of infrastructure to support this global technology, but they still all have to travel through nodes. And right now, they also have to go through, um, oh, I'm sorry, the, the name escapes me, but if you want to convert your Bitcoins or your other cryptocurrencies, oh, the exchanges, they have to go through an exchange. And when you set up a, an account at an exchange, you have to give them your name, your address, I mean, all of your information. So people think it's private. Well, it's probably not as private as you think. And people think that because it is decentralized, that it means that it's outside of the system. But China's government is decentralized. Who has the power in China's government? The guy that's at the state level or the Communist Party at the top that's now sending their agents into all of these state-run organizations to get even more control. So decentralization is just a perception management tool to get you to think that you're invisible and independent so and they even say this i mean you know you'll see it but the bis and the imf even talk about that well maybe that third party and how they're connected doesn't matter so much because if you don't go through an exchange then your cryptocurrency how do you convert it into something that's usable unless you convert it directly for a product that they ship you and you know that's where they want us to go but uh, i think they're be, we're all being lulled into a false sense of security well not me because i don't trust it but most people that right. are participating do now, now you mentioned the biz and, and I, they came out with a warning they came out with a warning that the world is headed into a debt trap now the Bank of International Settlement, I mean, it's the Central Bank of Central Banks, and they're telling everyone that there's too much debt out there. Why Why are they telling, I mean, they're the ones who spread the debt around. I mean, why are they warning the world that there's too much debt? Well, again, that goes back to perception management, right? It's like, you know, it's like the, the what is that? Well, sometimes I actually do feel like Chicken Little, but they're pointing a finger at what they do so that you don't think that they're part of it. But the very system is based upon debt and credit. And that part of that, look at the Equifax, you know, 143 million that we know of records breached along with in Great Britain and, uh, and I think Australia, I can't remember, but there are a few other places. So this is just the beginning of that coming out, but that holds your records to determine your credit suitability. And that determines whether or not you get a loan and the rates that you pay and insurance, in some cases, whether or not you can have a job. So the entire system has become absolutely credit, which is the flip side of debt, based. And so, yeah, they come out, but it's a, here, look, see, we told you, we told you, well, yeah, you're helping to perpetuate it, but we warned you about it. And, and nobody reads those reports anyway, just some of us nerds. True. <laughs> I wish uh, I wish more people would read those reports because I think they're they're um, more candid in there. They're certainly more honest than they are when they talk in front of Congress, right? Or on yes. TV. Those reports are very very telling in many many ways. So yeah, debt bubble. You think? <laughs> so I mean, at the same time, 
the Fed, you know, on their balance sheet, they have like four and a half trillion dollars um, on their balance sheet. And, and they're talking about unwinding now. Um, oh yeah. I mean, is does this really matter at this point or is this just a propaganda tool? Well, number one, the fact that not just our Federal Reserve, but the ECB and the and uh, Abenomics, I mean, they're all talking about unwinding their balance sheets. What, although they added two trillion just since the first of this year to their balance to the global balance sheets, so that means that the Fed didn't have to do it. But considering the fact that they're what, and I, and I don't have that data right in front of me, so I could be off a little bit, but I believe they uh, hold about 20% or buy about 20% of the new it, treasuries issued just via the runoff from their current balance sheet. And in the mortgage-backed securities, they, they buy 30% of the new issue. So you tell me, just by the runoff, you know, the return of dividends and principal of those balance sheets. So they're saying it's going to look like paint dry. What they'll probably do is they will probably give the banks even more money to buy the, the mortgage-backed securities and the treasury bonds that they are no longer buying so they can show it. But yeah, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's, it's garbage. It's garbage because if they do it, I mean, it's never been done before. The balance sheets of central banks have never been this large before. Uh, they are the markets. Whether you're talking about the stock market, the bond market, or the real estate market, they are the markets. So how can you have a huge player like that stop? And if it, So it, slowly, they really don't stop. I mean, if they did stop, you know, they, they if they did stop buying the bonds, they'd stop with the stimulus. What would happen to the economy? Well, you know, uh, uh, well, OK, that's a really interesting question because you really have to look at top down economics. The first place that would be impacted would obviously be the, the bond markets, the real estate markets, because and in both those cases, if they really did, and if we were in a normal free market, okay, which we are not, but if we were, you would see interest rates spar spike enormously. And what would that do to all the other markets? The, the whole economy would implode and it would be a domino effect. And since the derivatives, which are God knows how much in terms of quadrillions, not billions, trillions, but quadrillions, those are based upon the price action of the underlying stocks, bonds, real estate, and other derivatives. So that whole thing implodes. So there you go. You've got a wipeout, uh, people flying to the safety of, well, that's, they try to fly to the safety of gold, but you know, that the physical market is limited. There's only so much of it, no matter where they might find more, there's still a finite amount of physical. Um, and then everybody that's in the crypto space is trapped in, in that space. Now, I think what is likely to happen, and I don't know this for sure, but um, first of all, they say that they need 3% of the population participating in the crypto space and they feel that that would then give them enough critical mass move to push it through. So now you have this massive crisis, which they've also said they need to conclude the transition. And here they have the, the Fed coin or the US dollar coin or the IMF, the SDR coin. So you've got the central banks globally that come out with this coin that say, look at these are safe and secure. So, hey, because we're so fabulous, we'll let you convert what you have left in those coins into these coins because those coins are no longer legal anyway. And look at how volatile they are. I mean, that's just craziness. Here, be safe with us. So then the foxes continue to get to, to guard the hen house. So I think that's what we are highly likely to see. But yes, that's how they do that. That's how they do the, the um, transitions. And then when they reset the system, remember the way that they've done it, 
you know, over over 4,800 times is to revalue the fiat money against monetary gold, so physical bullion gold, and then that's when you will see gold express to its true value, which is based upon its most important function. And it'll have to cover some measure of all the paper that's out there. I mean, I can tell you what it is right now based upon public debt, but that's so conservative. You know, we're, I think we're, we're approaching like 90, 94, 9,500 bucks in gold and something like, I think 654 in silver if they did the reset today, but God only knows what it's going to be by the time they do the reset. I mean, you have the dollars have no value. I mean, you're talking about a reset, um, and we're, we're seeing countries like, you know, Venezuela now is using the yuan um, futures contract backed by oil and gold. We see China, Russia, and many other countries where they're, you know, Iraq now is looking at Iran. Iran is using the yuan. Um, Syria most likely is going to be using the yuan. I mean, all these countries now are moving away from the dollar. I mean, do, is the writing on the wall that the dollar is finished? A hundred percent. And, you know, you bring up Venezuela, but remember too, China just opened that or is in the process of op opening that oil bourse where, where oil producing nations can se basically sell their, their oil for gold. And Venezuela said, mm -mm, not taking dollars for gold any, or for oil anymore. We're, we'll take euros, we'll take yuan, we'll take whatever else, but we're not taking dollars. So yeah, it's done. But this didn't just happen today either. You can see, you know, with oil all the way up at where it was 110 or 120 bucks a barrel, and then it slipped all the way down to that 28, you know, it looked an awful lot to me like the run we saw on the dollar in the 60s when foreign governments were uh, converting the dollars that they held into gold and pulling the gold out of our system. So we have to understand what backs the dollar and both in treasury bonds we've seen globally, uh, central banks selling bonds for, I mean, this has been happening over years, not over minutes. So between that and now, oil for gold instead of absolutely you have no choice but oil for dollars which that's been shifting since 2005 but yeah i think uh the handwriting is on the wall if, if people would just open their eyes and look when we go through this reset is everything is china and russia are they are they set up to handle the new system is that where it's moving from west to east or do you think the fed will still be in existence. You think the U.S. government will still control the currency market, maybe with cryptocurrency. Uh, how do you think this is going to play out? Well, number one, I think what we're going to see are a lot of regional currencies. So just like Canada is a regional currency for Canadians, I mean, you can't go to Italy and use the Canadian dollar. So yes, I think uh, number one, I definitely think that the name of the new currency here in this country will be the dollar coin because they have to keep the name because that's what people are married to. They're married to the name of the dollar. So I do think the Fed will be in existence, but I also see a lot of the power shifting from obviously from the West to the East to China particularly, and um, but I think overall, the world reserve currency is, I, I there's not one doubt in my mind, is going to be the SDR controlled by the IMF. I don't think China really wants the responsibility of being the world reserve currency, and I don't think Russia does either, but they wanna have a lot of power at the IMF and they absolutely do. I mean, we've changed rules and bent over backwards to include them in that SDR basket. So uh, I think the buck is gonna stop at the, at the technocrats at the, uh, at the IMF. And China is spearheading it because their government is technocratic, decentralized, but technocratic. 
the systems are more important than the people. And they do what they have to to support the systems. Look at what's happening right now with ICOs and the exchanges. Now, there are ways around it and not everybody was called to that. Um, in fact, Octane, which their function is to digitize tangibles, all tangibles, every tangible. Um, I had emailed them because somebody asked me, ah, well, see, they just shut down all the ICOs, so that means no more Octane. So I actually tweeted them and they tweeted back to me and they said, you know, the English is in translation is a little bit challenging, but they told me two interesting things. Number one, they told me that they're still issuing ICOs in exchanges in Hong Kong and um, Singapore, so outside of China. And they also said that because they digitize physical assets, because this is an asset. Okay, it's real. If somebody else needs a cup, I can barter with this. Um, that they were immune from that. Now, I might not have fully understood the translation, but I'm going to talk about that actually a little bit later today. Um, so that's what that's what Octane said that they are outside of that. Okay, either in the in the and that was that response I just got back from them um, yesterday. So that's uh, even after they've closed down the, ex shut down the exchanges as well as the ICOs. So, uh, you know, decentralized doesn't mean that there's not one entity or group that's in control. It just is your perception that you're anonymous and you have control. But no way will central banks allow anybody uh, to infiltrate their money monopoly. No way. And I think that starts with the technocrats at the IMF. Now, you said something very interesting about um, us moving to the SDRs and not being within a country as a reserve currency. Does that mean now that every single country will borrow money from the central bank? Actually, the central bank right now, what you're saying is they have total control. Because the United States right now has the Fed embedded in the government, really. I mean, they're really working hand in hand. And they say, oh, we need more, more, more of this. They just create the currency. But now, just like uh, the, um, the EU, where they actually loan money to different governments because they don't have the power to create it on their own. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that is exactly what I'm saying. So the central banks now have actually convinced the world to uh, convince us that they need to take control of everything. Yeah. That's kind of scary. I mean, you know, they tout China as a shining example of many things. You know, they have, they do not have a particularly free internet system. They don't, they don't have a particularly free system there. That's not, that's, a technocratic system and that's there are there are those that believe that science and scientists and mathematicians and engineers should absolutely rule everything and we should just follow right along and take away uh, most of our free will so yes I'm really sorry to say that but what is a central bank it's a private corporation isn't it yes so if this does happen, what happens to all the entitlement programs here? What happens to um, the government? I mean, they're just, you know, they're spending like crazy. I mean, what happens here? Look at Greece. So That's you're saying, what happens. So they're just going to put us into debt. We're going to have to have austerity. And the way of life is going to completely change. Yes. For if you're not prepared for it. I mean, that, that's why you have to be prepared to be as independent as possible from the system. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, and community. And, you know, if we don't come together, that's exactly what's going to happen. But the more people that know what's happening and understand it, that's why, you know, that's why I'm all about the proof 
that's why I like what you do where you're showing them what we're talking about because you know it when you see it it's obvious but if you aren't looking for it you just blindly move right into it and so yes I mean Greece is an absolutely perfect could not be more perfect example of what happens when technocracy takes over systems they don't care about the people it's about so, the system so when when is this reset going to take place i mean is it going to happen like one day or is this going to be over time and they're going to do it very slowly well it's been already happening all of these i mean come on does anybody really is there anybody that thinks we're in a free market i mean even on Main Street TV, you know, you hear them talk about the central banks and it's all up to the central banks and they're moving the markets and they're putting liquidity in. And then, of course, they talk out of two sides of their mouth when they talk about what a great bull market this is. But, I mean, now you may choose to participate in this in this central bank driven rally, but I don't think anybody argues with the fact that that's what it is, a central bank driven rally. And there is no good price discovery and they have chosen the winners and the losers. You know, I mean, is 2008, I know people have short memories, but is it really that long ago that you can't remember who got bailed out in this? Was it you? Cause I didn't get bailed out. So do you still think the system's going to crash? Well, I think it'll be slow until it's fast. You know, um, so in other words, you, you can even look at what's happened, you know, in China. They let things chug along, chug along, chug along, and then bam, they put the lid on it. So I think that's what it's going to look like when they feel like they have, you know, everything in place to handle the rest of this transition. And then yes, then it'll be, um, you know, here, here's the other part. Keep in mind, we have to be scared enough and feel enough pain that we're willing to accept what they wanna put on our shoulders. So they need this next crisis, this next market implosion, this next loss of credit and liquidity um, to get us to say, Mr. Bill, save us. We'll do anything you say. And and how do they create their liquidity? It's not even a claim. The SDR isn't even a claim against anything. So, you know, they, they well, we probably will have to start buying it. But right now, what they've been doing since 69 is allocating or giving it. Lynette, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Once again, how can people see your work? Well, uh, we have a YouTube channel, which is IT. You just Google YouTube and ITM Trading. Uh, and then also ITMTrading.com, where there's even some more things that we're working on. And, of course, you can always give us a call. Uh, if you have questions... One of the things that happens when I do these is we get a lot of questions, which is great. I love questions. That's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, but I can't always answer all of the questions. And so if you if you have a specific question, you can give us a call at 888-696-4653. Uh, wait, 888-696-46, yeah, 53, sorry about that. Um, but we love questions. So if we don't get to them or you have a question, call us up. We're happy to have a conversation. You don't even have to do anything with us. You can just call us with the questions and we're good with that too, because we are here to be of service. Fantastic. I'll put that information at the bottom of the video to make it okay. easier for people uh, to get in contact with you. Once again, thank you very much for being on the spotlight. I really appreciated it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And you guys all be safe out there. Thanks.